This is Covering the Spread, part of the FanDuel Podcast Network. Week one is officially in the books, which means we are now into overreaction season, entering week number two, and it's time to break down where we are overreacting, where we are underreacting, and reset all of our calibration setting in to week number two. To do so, we're going to talk to Olivia Moody, Liv Moods, get her read on whose stock is up entering week two, whose stock is down, and her first look at the week two spreads and totals at FanDuel Sportsbook. This is Covering the Spread, a FanDuel research podcast. My name is Jim Saunas. I am a managing editor for FanDuel Research. Joined here as mentioned by Liv Moods. Check her out on X at Liv Moods. Find her work on the FanDuel social accounts and also over at Gorilla Sports. Liv, week two, uh, coming in hot. How was week one for you? Well, week one wasn't horrible. Um, I went ahead and actually faded my my home team, the Denver Broncos. Not really, but I did take uh, Bo Nix under on his passing yards, which you know I kind of expect in week one that what we're going to get is just – kind of messy offense, ugly football. I actually had a a little bit of a hot take that I recently talked about where I feel like there should be a required amount of minutes that starting quarterbacks have to clock in preseason to get some of that ugly football out of the way because week one is just the quarterback play just feels like hot garbage. We're seeing so many mistakes. And and again, that's what warrants a lot of people to have such strong overreactions when you've got such a high standard for whatever quarterback is, is your quarterback. And then we we see what we saw in week one, which is not great offense. Um, The defenses usually come to play. And so Took the under on Bo Nix because that was exactly what I expected. You know, preseason is one thing, but when you really get out there and you're up against some of the best defenses in the NFL, it's very tough. So we had some hot garbage quarterback play, but that is to be expected in week one. You know, everyone's getting the kinks out, but that's why I would love if maybe there's just like one game they're required to play in preseason, both the teams. um, So you can kind of get some of those kinks out and we can watch some really good football in week one. But I do know we will see some improvements for sure in week two. Yeah, and it's important with the rookies to keep expectations in mind because I know we can think back to certain good week one showings by rookies, but they're more rare than you might think. So it's important to keep that in mind when looking at not just Bo Nix, but also Caleb Williams taking a look at uh, Jaden Daniels had some issues as well. And it's important not to overreact to that because they will get more acclimated. They'll get more comfortable with the speed of the NFL and stuff like that. So like Liv was saying, don't overreact. I agree that I love to see guys more in the preseason we'll evaluate and uh, reset if he gets that for week number two we'll dive into Liv's uh, official reactions to week one whose stock is up stock down we'll talk some Bengals and then take a look ahead to week number two as well but first a reminder to make sure you're subscribed to the covering the spread podcast feed wherever you get your podcast we're here Monday through Friday now through the end of the NFL regular season talking about college football on Wednesdays NFL on Monday Tuesday Thursday Friday all up on the Covering the Spread podcast feed, the FanDuel YouTube page, and FanDuel TV Plus to get FanDuel TV Plus. Go to FanDuel.com slash watch and log in to your FanDuel account, or you can also download the FanDuel TV Plus app on your Amazon Fire, Apple TV, or Roku device. Football is back, and there's no better place to get in on the NFL action than FanDuel, America's number one sports, but because right now all customers can bet $5 and get a three-week free trial of NFL Sunday ticket from YouTube and YouTube TV. Then you'll be able to watch every regular season a Sunday afternoon out of market game. Plus, with FanDuel, you don't even have to leave the app to access real-time stats and data to help you make even more winning bets. Download FanDuel, America's number one sportsbook. Must be 21 plus and present in select states or 18 plus and present in D.C. Offer ends 9-22-24. After a three-week free trial, the full price of NFL Sunday tickets will be automatically charged seasonally canceling a time no refunds terms restrictions and embargoes apply youtube tv base plan required to watch youtube tv redemption requires a google account and current form of payment gambling problem call 1-800-GAMBLER or visit fanduel.com slash rg call 1-888-789-7777 or visit ccpg.org slash chat in connecticut visit md gambling health in maryland hope is here visit gambling helpline ma.org or call 800-327-5050 for 20 20- Four seven support in Massachusetts, or call one eight seven seven eight Hope and Y, or text Hope and Y in New York. 
Now, Liv, let's begin things here by talking about those Bengals. Probably the biggest yeah. disappointment of week number one as they lost Absolutely. a game to the Patriots outright, not just covering, outright loss. What's your level of concern with Cincinnati based on what you saw in that loss? I, I really, I'm not that concerned because anyone that has been kind of tracking the Bengals for some time now, they historically start this way. They start off really slow. They play really sloppy, ugly football. And we've seen them get upset in week ones more than once. Um, now, because it's the Patriots who were expected to be one of the worst NFL teams this upcoming season, yeah, it does feel a little... Ooh, should we be concerned about this? But if you've been, you know, watching the NFL for some time now, the Bengals historically start slow. They play ugly football. And honestly, I don't think we spent enough time collectively as football fans talking about the fact that their star wide receiver held out until the very last moment before starting the season. So there's going to be some time that we've got to be patient with this Bengals team as they gel as a offense, you know, Joe Burrow coming back from injury. But like I said, star wide receiver kind of held out to the very end and wasn't entire like wasn't fully immersed in this offense in the offseason wasn't fully locked in mentally so it's going to take some time and it's always taken time for the Bengals they always start slow they always make everybody freak out um, but this is still Joe Burrow you know obviously after an injury you got to have a little bit of grace because their bodies are getting back into the swing of things but I'm not as worried as most people are I think the fact that like I said it was against the Patriots and the Patriots had such a low bar of expectation entering this season it does hurt a little bit more than normal but I think that they're going to bounce back just fine like we've seen them do in past seasons when they start slow and I think the other thing to note there, on top of what you all what you said there, is that they lost T. Higgins midweek, so they didn't have time yeah. to game plan around Higgins not playing. They weren't sure if Jamar Chase would be able to play. And a lot of times, you'll see teams have issues like this when their game plan is forced to change midweek. Higgins, I believe, got hurt yep. during Thursday's practice, and then uh, Jamar Chase, they weren't really sure what he'd play even up to Saturday because he had an illness there, and then the contract dispute. So. I think there were a lot of factors that led to this, but none of those factors seem to be season long things. So I'm on board with you where I don't want to overreact too much to what the Bengals did in week one. Yeah. And I don't, that that's not to say that in week two, I trust them again with my money. Sure. And I'm like, woo, you know, I want to give them a little bit of time to, like you said, acclimate to some of the changes, some of the roadblocks they were thrown and, and find that chemistry again. Once they find it, I'm not worried. Does that mean that I'm going to go hammer them in week two? Probably not. I'm probably going to take my time uh, just like they typically take their time as they're getting into their season. So not going to run straight to the books and start, you know, throwing bets on the Bengals or futures or anything, but uh, I'm not as concerned as most people. Yeah. The unfortunate thing for them is they face the chiefs. So no time to acclimate exactly, there, which is why I'm like, I'm good. I don't need, we'll hold on. I don't need to prove, prove my point with a, with a bet on the Bengals in week two. We'll see you in week three, Cincinnati. We'll see you in week three. Uh, yeah, how about that? There we go. There we go. All right. So we're not pushing the Bengals stock up, but there were plenty of teams live. You could consider as push, boosting their stock up based on what we saw in week one. So which teams in your power rankings got the biggest move up based on what you saw in the opener? To be honest with you, I'm going to go ahead and say Baker Mayfield and company. Pretty impressed by what I saw there. Uh, I think, you know, is it worth a Baker Mayfield MVP sprinkle? Maybe. You never know. I mean, he looked really great to me, and this offense looked pretty electric, pretty cohesive. They really did not um, look like they had missed a beat in that game. So I would say if I had to pick a team that kind of made me go, whoa, I didn't know you had that in you. It, it would be the Buccaneers. I was pretty impressed by what they did. And obviously um, we saw in this division, the Falcons had a little bit of a rough go. Kirk Cousins, again, not getting any younger and coming off of a pretty brutal injury may take some time for him to have a little more better, uh, better ball protection as well as just again, clicking with this offense. And then the Saints, I do think there's going to be a very large overreaction with the Saints team, given the whooping they put on the Panthers, who I had unfortunately bet on. I know, feel free to laugh. It was maybe the worst bet I've ever placed in my whole life. Um, I do think there's going to be a large overreaction there based on the domination by the Saints, but I do think that game was a larger reflection of the, how bad the Panthers are and not how great the Saints are. So honestly, you know, at plus 210, I'm not sure you're going to get the Buccaneers at plus money much longer if they keep playing the way that they did in week one. So I'm about ready to, to put my money where my mouth is and grab them to win the NFC South. 
Okay, that is plus 210, as you mentioned right now, over at FanDuel Sports with the Buccaneers to win the NFC South. I thought the most impressive thing about that Bucks win was Baker Mayfield creating. Like, that's not a Baker Mayfield trait, like, you know, juking yeah. and jiving and getting out of the way of stuff and creating outside of structure. But he did that several times. He did. In that win over great. the Commanders. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. I don't know where that came from. Maybe it's the the new dad vibes for, for Baker Mayfield. He's suddenly more <laughs> spry, you know, chasing around, uh, running after bottles totally. and stuff like that. But he looks you have great. to be quick when you're a parent. So maybe there's That's a right. little bit of that dad energy. Yeah, totally. Right. Right. But he looked like a changed guy. So I agree. Stock up for the Bucks. I have the Saints winning the NFC South. Uh, got that at plus 490. They're down to two to one. Ooh, I think that's an overreaction. Like going from 490 to two to one. I know that the Falcons lost and opened up a lot there. Yep. But like that's too big of a, a move even for me as someone who has been high in the Saints the entire offseason. Yeah, that's exactly how I feel. And I knew that that would be an overreaction where, you know, they won by 37 points. They yeah. they absolutely, I mean, they nearly shut out the Panthers. It was it was a, a great performance by the Saints. But again, I think that that game was more of a reflection of how bad the Panthers are about to be and not how great the Saints are going to be. To your point, um, do the Saints have a chance to win this division? Absolutely. Uh, they looked great in so many ways, but I do think there's going to be a lot of people that that slightly overreact to that domination in week one. And to me, it was more of a reflection of the loser than it was the winner. So I'm not all the way there on the Saints yet. Maybe it's because I'm salty that they made me look like such a loser myself <laughs> because I bet plus three and a half for the Panthers, you know? And that's the thing. I, I really want to stress to people in the betting space, if you're a perfectionist, good luck. And I am one. And so I have struggled in this space yeah. having that realization of like, there's going to be weeks where you look really silly and yeah. you get a little embarrassed and you just got to take it on the chin and understand that you're going to lose bets uh, and it's going to happen. And, and you're going to have bets that feel really good in the moment. And then you're at halftime and your team hasn't scored. So it's normal. Take a deep breath. Uh, it happens to, to all of us. So I've got to just take it on the chin, Jen, and just say, you know, the Panthers, they got me and and never again. They won't get me ever again. <laughs> See, Liv, this is why we got to get you to bet some NASCAR because you lose all the time Ooh. in NASCAR and like it really desensitizes you to losing. I I there feel you nothing go. now okay. uh, because like you're betting, NASCAR, right, if you're betting like a favorite, they're plus 650. You're expected okay. to lose that bet way more often than, than not. So I think I that's it. my new agenda for this year is to get you to bet some NASCAR and then just yes. losing is you become numb to it. Jim, I trust you a whole lot. So if you think that that'll help me with the emotions of the of the NFL yes. season, I am right there with you. I will join you for sure. I I appreciate that. And we'll make that our agenda <laughs> for the rest of the year. Now, there we go. Bucks are stock up. There is also the flip side of the coin, Liv. Who's stock down uh, for you based on what you saw in week one? Well, for sure, the Panthers. I think if you've been to, if you've been listening to covering the spread up until this point, you can probably guess that. It's funny because I think most people, based on my backdrop here, would probably expect me to say the Denver Broncos, but I have not given up on my Denver Broncos just yet. I haven't, you know, the, the term rookie mistakes doesn't just come from thin air. You know, we have a rookie yeah. quarterback that was named a captain. There's a lot of pressure there. And so I think that I need to be patient with the process a little bit, and, and that's going to be okay. Unfortunately, given the circumstances, of course, my stock is down on the Packers, not knowing what Jordan Love's return is going to look like. When is that going to happen? You know, everybody was so impressed by what he did last year and in the postseason last year. So unfortunately, just because of the injury and, and given how important Jordan Love is to this offense, naturally my stock is down there just – again, because of the unfortunate circumstances we're in. So that's kind of a, I feel like a, a pretty obvious one. I forgot to mention stock up a little bit on the Arizona Cardinals. I had oh. this team being just absolutely horrible this season. I had no faith in Kyler Murray and to be able to be competitive against a team like the bills and a quarterback like Josh Allen to me is, is pretty cool. So stock up a little bit there, but again, um, that was a close game, and I think it was a little too close for comfort. So I could also make a case for my stock being down with the Buffalo Bills. I felt like sure. you're going against a Cardinals team that is expected to be one of the worst teams next to the Patriots in the NFL, and they almost beat you. So I do think, again, the Bills, 
while they did get a win, they've got some tough competition coming up in their schedule. You know, they're in a very tough division. So if it was a pretty close game between the Arizona Cardinals, what is this Bills team going to look like up against the Dolphins, up against Patrick Mahomes? I mean, they've got a lot of competition heading their way that is going to be a very different story um, in comparison to the Arizona Cardinals. So yeah, I would say maybe my stock went down because my stock went up on the Cardinals in the same breath. I can say my stock kind of went down with the Buffalo bills and a tough test for the bills coming up in week two, because they face the dolphins on Thursday night football right now, the dolphins favored by a point and a half of FanDuel Sportsbook and uh, the bills yep. money line there. Plus one Oh four. I did take the bills at plus one Oh four. So, uh, Need them to bounce back in a big way. I know they won, but uh, did not cover the closing line. They covered early week line five and a half, closed six and a half, though. So they didn't cover the closing line against Arizona. I need to bounce back from them uh, and to cover on yeah. Thursday night. Well, and honestly, um, it's going to sound crazy because it's such a great, uh, two great teams going head to head in Thursday night football. I hate this matchup because I wasn't entirely <laughs> impressed by the Miami Dolphins in week one sure, either. Sure. I felt like they, their run game is a big concern for me right now. They got to be able to run the ball and we didn't see much of that. And you've got a guy like Tyreek Hill, who of course at any given moment can get you, get you points on the board and can end up in the end zone, but he's also going to become a priority for defenses. And if they don't have that run game, makes me a little worried. So believe it or not, I hate this matchup because I don't really know what side I'm on right now. So kind yeah. of feeling a little indifferent because I wasn't overly impressed by either one of these teams in week one. So again, kind of makes you, this, this makes me wonder, is this a stay away? Do I maybe just touch on the anytime touchdown market? Um, Cause I don't have a side in this one. And clearly Vegas predicts it's going to be a close game. So I don't know how I feel in this one. I might need to sleep on it for a few more nights because neither one of these teams were overly impressive to me in week one. And that run game for the Dolphins could be more concerning here because both Devon Achan and Raheem Mostert didn't practice Monday in a short turnaround for them. They were both kind of, they played through it, but were definitely banged up in week one at separate times. Yep. Mostert had a shoulder. Achan, I believe, had a lower body injury. So things to monitor entering Thursday night. Speaking of Thursday night, Liv, any week two bets that stand out to you at first look over at FanDuel Sportsbook? Well, you've actually already got it pulled up right here because I do think people will overreact very, very much to the Saints domination. I'm liking the Cowboys minus six and a half. Unlike Cowboys fans, I do not believe it's their year and they're Super Bowl bound off of one week because I know how this Cowboys team operates, right? They look really great in the regular season. They, they look dominant, really, uh, throughout the regular season. And then you get them to the postseason and you're typically left feeling pretty disappointed. However, I do, I did like what I saw uh, with this Cowboys team, especially against a defense like the Browns. For them to be able to score as efficiently as they did against such a solid uh, top 10 defense, really. I actually took the under in that game because I expected it to be, you know, defense more than offense and the Cowboys found a way. So I actually don't mind laying the points here with the Cowboys. And you know me, Jim. You've known me for years. I usually love an underdog. I usually love an underdog. I don't always like laying the points with the favorite, but in this case, I think there's going to be a very large overreaction. It's always tough to play in Dallas. Dallas is at home here, coming off of a great win against a great defense. So I feel like laying the points with the Cowboys, and then when I look at the game just below that one, I'm liking the over. I think there is a slugfest here between Baker Mayfield and Jared Goff. We know that this Detroit Lions offense uh, went into overtime against the Rams, found a way to win, and that wasn't an entirely uh, high-scoring game compared to what it could have been. But I really like both of these offenses, what I saw from them in week one. I love both of these quarterbacks. And so I'm liking the over. I know it's pretty high, but I do think we could see just a back and forth, back and forth slugfest between Baker and Goff. So I'm liking the over in that one and laying the points with the Cowboys. So far, that's all I've got. But I'm sure by the end of the week, I'll have plenty more that I'm wanting to put some money on. That total for Bucks Lions, 51 and a half. It warms my heart as someone who uh, loves efficient collegiate quarterbacks to see a high total in the game for Baker Mayfield, Jared Goff. I'd gotten worried about those two guys at certain points. Uh, my dynasty teams got worried, but we're back, baby. We, it's, it, we are so back with Baker Mayfield and Jared Goff uh, dueling out totally. in Detroit. 51 and a half the total there. And the Cowboys minus six and a half is uh, minus 115 at FanDuel Sportsbook as of right now. That is Live Moods. Check her out on X at Live Moods. Find her on the FanDuel socials as well and over on Gorilla Sports. Live, I appreciate the time. Good luck to you in week two. And we'll talk to you once again next week. Thank you.
You too, Jim. Thanks for having me. All righty. Thank you, Liv. Thank you, everyone, for tuning in as well. We are back with you once again tomorrow talking some college football. NFL with Dubs Anderson Thursday. Megan Payton back with you on Friday as well. Going to be a fun week here getting you set for week number two. This has been Covering the Spread, a fan duel research podcast. 